Hey everyone, in today's video I'll be going over an assassin themed build and honestly you hit for monstrous numbers just sneaking up behind people, backstabbing them, and even when you get noticed like you can still dish out a crazy amount of damage. It's just good for all situations. So saying all of that, let's dive into the build starting off with the weapons you'll need. Since we're going to be doing a lot of backstabs and you know landing critical hits a lot, it only makes sense to use the best weapon for that, the Miscarade? Miscarade? Miscarade. I think that's how you pronounce it, don't quote me on it, yes I know I suck ass at pronouncing things, but this weapon right over here. It has the highest critical damage of 140% which is the absolute highest in the game, so there's nothing better at all. And our critical hits which are, you know, backstabs and guard breaks, are going to do so much damage it's either going to kill the person completely or take out a massive massive chunk of their health but it doesn't normally do this much damage though so i'm also using the dagger's talisman that increases our critical damage by a huge 17 percent because you know I'm, I'm leaning more towards that one shot to make it feel like an assassin build rather than having the guy turn around with 10 hp and looking at me like what the fuck did you just do and even if he does turn around to try and kill you, that's where the Ash of War in this thing comes so, so clutch. The White Shadows Lure. You basically throw it a decoy and enemies will lose all focus on you. Like, you can run around them, behind them, shit, you can even be right in front of them and they won't take a single look at you. All they want is that smoke, but it doesn't last forever though. Just long enough for you to get a backstab in, or if you want to just completely ditch that enemy and run to the next room. On top of that, it does cost a fair bit, 15 mana per use, which meh, isn't too bad, but there's a way of making this completely free so you can use this everywhere you go non-stop. And to make that happen, we're gonna need the Assassin Cerulean Dagger. Every critical hit we land, we get 15 mana back. So use White Shadow's Lure, get a critical hit, refund the mana, and repeat that little cycle of life for infinite use. If you can't get the White Shadow's Lure, the next best thing would be Royal Knight's Resolve. It just empowers your next attack to do some stupid levels of damage, usually one-shotting that person right there on the spot, no questions asked. And yes, I know I mentioned the importance before of getting that one shot for, you know, the critical hits to make it feel like an assassin build, but White Shadow's Lure is still better because it gives you more opportunities to land those critical hits versus Royal Knight's Resolve, you need that person to either be facing away from you or you have to guard break them. And the absolute last, last two things about this dagger because I am tired of talking about it and I just want to move on from it, you'll want to use the occult variation for the highest damage possible with this setup. And if you think you're really good, like some top level shit, use the buckler shield in your other hand so you can parry people to make those openings for critical hits. It's hard to do, but that's why I'm saying if you think you're really, really good at this. Now for the weapons you'll want to use when you're fighting bosses, cause sadly White Shadow's Lure doesn't seem to work on them. But that's not an issue at all, cause we can absolutely melt them in an instance. You're not trapped in the room with the boss, the boss is trapped in a room with you. So the weapon of choice is the Scavenger's Curved Sword. Not one, but two of these. The crazy thing about these weapons is you can reach close to 2000 attack power with this setup. And if you didn't know, curved swords have a really fast attack speed and a unique running and jumping attack that lets you swing four times in an instance. Four attacks in one second with 2000 attack power. You're dropping bodies left and right and no one is standing in your way. It's like in other games when they say stealth is an option so you just go all out loud clapping everyone in sight. Normally they don't reach 2000 attack power right off the bat or that would just be completely broken. So to get it this high I'm using a few things. The Lord of Blood's Exultation, the White Mask, and the Thorny Crack Tear. The Talisman and Mask do the exact same thing increasing our damage whenever a blood loss happens. With just these two that's a 30% damage increase and to make this happen as easy as possible not only are you going to use the occult variation on these weapons to increase their damage and their bleed buildup, but we're also using the seppuku ash of war to further increase our bleed buildup and activate that damage buff right there on the spot. With the thorny crack tier it works exactly like the winged sword talisman. Landing consecutive hits is going to increase our damage output 
by up to 20%. And you can see how fast these swords swing, so getting this maxed out won't be an issue at all. But back to the jumping attacks, that's going to be our hardest hitting attack because the Claw Talisman and the Raptor's Black Feathers, which we have equipped, is going to increase our jump attacks damage by a total of 25%. So combining this with all of our other damage modifiers, we're going to slaughter whoever we jump at. It's just ridiculous, so you're not really going to need an Ash of War that does damage for our other sword. That's why I'm using Bloodhound Step, so we have more mobility in fights, and it also just gives that assassin feel with all of its dashing around to jump in and out of the fight really quickly. Now, the last thing before I mention the stats required is the other tier for the Flask of Wondrous Physic, the Stonebard Crack tier. All it does is make it easier to break an enemy's stance to get a critical hit in, even though we'll probably kill them before that even happens with how much sheer damage we can throw out. For the minimum stats required, you'll need at least 9 strength and 14 dex to use all the weapons effectively. Afterwards, I'd recommend putting majority of your stat points into Arcane to further increase your physical damage and the amount of bleed buildup you can apply per attack. I'm also going to put links in the description down below for all the gear I'm using if you want more information on it and where you can find them all for yourself. That's everything for today's video. I'd also like to give a big thanks to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.